Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and we are continuing with our Space Night Week here on the Venom Vlog where we're talking about Flash Thompson and his time, I guess, as uh, Venom the Space Knight. So, uh, you know, he went from Agent Venom, uh, you know, and then he went to join the Guardians of the Galaxy and then Brian Michael Bendis' run, it kind of, the first volume kind of ended with him uh, bringing the suit to Clintar and the Clintar race cleansed the, the symbiote in a way. Um, but it turns out that the suit may have not have been permanently cleansed because it's already starting to dip back into rage. After the last, uh, the first six issues of the series, we had, um, you know, the suit bonded with Mercurio, who was like the villain of the story. And that kind of reawakened um, the anger that's, you know, sometimes attributed with the symbiote. Uh, as we know it, when it bonded with Peter Parker and it broke off from him and joined Eddie, it turned Eddie into a very violent uh, person, obviously. And I guess Eddie was probably always had that in him, but the suit kind of, you know, helped that along, uh, if you will. And so, uh, so now it seems like the suit has been cleansed. It's more pure now. And now it's starting to, to like uh, relapse, which I, I kind of like that a little bit. If you look at it from the, the sense of Flash Thompson and Eddie Brock are these characters that are really hurting in a lot of ways. And they have these, um, I guess, codependencies and addictions of things, and they fall off the wagon constantly, you know, uh, or they have in the past. Some, you know, with Flash, in some cases, it was forced on him by Norman Osborn, uh, where he was, you know, recovering from, you know, being an alcoholic, and then Norman Osborn forced him to get drunk and, you know, put him in a car and crashed it, uh, you know, to kind of ruin his life to get back at Peter Parker. So it's, you know, it's been a hard road for, you know, Eddie Brock and Flash Thompson, and here is Flash Thompson, He's starting to find himself. You know, I think Flash uh, has always struggled on Earth, you know, and after learning, you know, during the Agent Venom story, like how much of a jerk he was and how people don't really see him in a positive light. I think him going out into space was a great way to get him a second chance at things. And I so I like that, if you look at it that way. And then the symbiote now dipping back into rage kind of reminds me of when Flash struggled with alcoholism. So it's it's kind of neat that there's these parallels. Um, but this this concept of a Space Knight thing we talked about in a previous episode, it was kind of Marvel just, you know, uh, they had the rights to the name Space Knight because of the ROM character that went back to IDW and Marvel wanted to do something with Space Knight. What's funny is that this book is basically, you know, he's not even a Space Knight really. He's an agent of the cosmos, but we find out later there are Space Knights. <laughs> so, so it's just kind of all over the place. Um, but, you know, I basically want to break the remaining stories we have left because we talked about the first six issues in one episode a couple episodes ago. And then we talked about um, the Black Vortex and the last three or four trades of Brian Michael Bendis' Guardians of the Galaxy run where Venom was a member of the team along with The Thing and uh, Kitty Pride and Groot and Rocket and all that and Gamora so, uh, and Angela. So we already talked about all that and got those over with. So now in this episode, we're just going to focus on uh, issue seven, eight, nine, and ten of the Agent, uh, or the I should say, this Venom Space Knight run uh, by Robbie Thompson. And it does start off with um, art by uh, Ariel uh, Olivetti again. So we got Ariel's artwork again, just for the first issue though. Um, and then I think Kim Jacinto does the art from issues uh, seven, eight, and uh, or I'm sorry, eight, nine, and ten. So uh, so the artwork will change. And I, I although I'm not a big fan of Ariel's artwork, um, I know people out there are. I'm just personally not as big of a fan. So when Kim Jacinto jumped in, I thought that was way more um, more my style for a Venom story. Uh, so I really like Kim's artwork. So we'll get there very soon because uh, we'll just wrap up real quickly here with issue seven. Mercurio obviously got away, and Flash is now with. His team, he's got Ika there, he's got Pick, uh, Pick's kid, I think his name is Hilla. Uh, and then we have 803, the, the depressed suicidal Eeyore robot. Um, so now he's got his own like team. So one of the ships that they take over and commandeer, he actually puts on the side of it the USS Enterprise. <laughs> Not Enterprise, but Enterprise. Um, so yeah, just kind of solidifying more like, hey, they're really going all in on this Star Trek stuff. <laughs> uh, and like I said, in the last episode, I kind of described Flash as a mix between James Bond a little bit, um, but also James T. Kirk from the newer version, the J.J. Abrams version, um, I guess Kelvin timeline, whatever they call that, uh, of Star Trek. Uh, so now that he's got his team together, before they depart to go look for Mercurio, uh, Tarna shows up. And Tarna, we remember, is the purple creature from the last, uh, you know, series that we talked to, the first six issues. And she shows up and says, uh, you know, Flash, I want to talk to you, but without our Clintar. 
So she's another agent of the cosmos. Her purple creature, Clintar, separates from her and reveals that Tarna is actually a scroll. And, you know, obviously Flash has kind of got over his scroll hatred recently because he did that one minor issue in Bendis' run where he kind of teamed up with some scrolls. So in this case, he's not like, you know, just attacking her. Um, he's willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. So there's one thing that Bendis kind of did that Robbie's kind of, you know, built off of, which is nice. Um, so uh, so they're talking, and of course it starts off as a seemingly friendly conversation until she says, look, uh, you're we're, we're sensing rage in your symbiote again, um, so we need to take it and destroy it. <laughs> or, you know, or bring it somewhere to, to put it to the final test to see if it should be destroyed. And Flash is like, you know, over my dead body, that's my friend. You're not taking him. So, of course, a battle ensues. And the suit actually lashes out, gives into its anger, cuts the purple Clintar in half, and then hijacks the ship. And as it's flying away, you know, the, the thrusters burn that purple Clintar. Uh, luckily, I think it still lived, but we never see it again for the rest of the series. But they do mention it twice that it survived. It just needs time to heal. So at least the sim, you know, at least Venom didn't kill it. So there's still a chance of redemption here. But it did hijack the ship and take off. So Flash is like great my my symbiote's gone and now tarna the scroll her symbiote is like left for dead pretty much we're going to save it but she doesn't have her symbiote and now we got to go try to find you know uh venom uh, basically so uh issue eight uh, has kim jacinta's artwork come in and like i said i'm more of a fan of this style of artwork especially for venom it just it works really well i think the colors pop really well too and so uh, it's just them going out into the universe looking for Venom, just trying to find the suit. And uh, and I say Venom, I know, I know that's not the actual name of the symbiote, but I'm just for, you know, just so you guys, for some people who might not know, I don't want to just keep saying the Clintar over and over and over, but the, the Venom suit, I guess, or the, you know, the Clintar suit, they're looking for it and uh, it's leaving them clues. And then they finally do come face to face with it, but it just knocks the team out, like it turns into Venom, beats the team down and then lures Flash onto the ship and then departs just with Flash, kind of abandoning the others. And what it does is it brings Flash to this like frozen tundra planet where it says uh, that this is the planet where it had its first host. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So I don't know if this fully conflicts with the first host miniseries. I'm going to have to reread that again because that was like something that took place before the... Um, the Kree Scroll War, or around the time of the Kree Scroll War, leading up to Battle World when they did Secret Wars. So, and I thought it went straight from that host, uh, Telkar, right to Battle World, but maybe it didn't. I don't know, or maybe it's talking about a different first host, or yeah, I don't know. So I don't know how this conflicts. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking. So maybe one of you guys can help set me straight in the comments down below. But uh, according to the, the the Stenum symbiote, they're on a planet, or they're on a graveyard, and he's like, this is where. My first host, you know, brought me and we slaughtered all these people. And he goes, and my first host was not a good person. So they don't really say who the first host is. So I guess it could be Telkar, but, you know, I'm just kind of curious. So now that Flash is starting to understand that the symbiote was cleansed, but there's still something, something missing, something that wasn't purely cleansed. And it's because a piece of the, the symbiote, a piece of Venom is missing, right? Um, obviously, Andy is still on Earth. So in issue nine... Um, Venom and the suit bond, and it's kind of taken, uh, you know, Flash through these memories, through Flash's memories, and it's like showing Flash, like, hey, you had a bad father, uh, then you went to school and you took out your anger from your father beating on you, taking it on people like Peter Parker, um, then you got, in, you know, into alcohol, you know, and started drinking, um, and then you, you know, uh, started treating Betty, uh, you know, horribly, I guess. And, uh, you know, not that he ever hurt Betty, but just emotionally, you know, was never there for Betty sometimes. And he goes, and so maybe you were always Venom, even without the symbiote, you were always Venom. And maybe we were just destined to be together because we're both broken and horrible beings. So it kind of reminded me a little bit of the movie when, you know, the symbiote looks at Eddie and says, like, you know, I, I like you because you're kind of a loser and I'm a loser on my home planet. Kind of reminded me of that a little bit. But he's still going through these memories and, uh, you know, they're trying to get to the root of everything. And actually, there's this really sweet moment where Flash is dealing with a regret he has still, which is his mother. Um, he's never really got closure with his mother after his father's death. And what he's worried about is that he's going to go back to Earth and that she's going to be already dead, uh, that she'll have died, you know, uh, of old age or something as he's been gone. And so um, so it's him, you know, in his memories, wearing the, the Venom suit, like sitting with his mother and his mother going like, you're not a monster, you, you know, I, I forgive you, I understand, you know, you're a grown man and you have other things you got to do in the world. Um, and I, I forgive you for, you know, you know, 
I guess, disappearing after your father died and the things you said after he died. And so it's kind of Flash dealing with that. So I really dug that. And then through that, Flash was able to um, distract the symbiote enough with those memories that uh, when his team shows up, Ika, you know, and Tarna and all of them, they actually blast Flash and take the suit off of him and cage it up. So now at the end of this issue, he has the, the symbiote back in a jar and, uh, and Flash is kind of like, hey, I'm sorry, old friend. I, I wish I didn't have to do this. Um, we need to figure out what's going on and we have to bring you back to um, the agents of the cosmos because they're going to put you through this final trial. Like I have to, I agree with Tarna. She lost, you know, her symbiote's wounded. We got to bring it back to heal and we might as well bring you back and hand you over to the agents of the cosmos and hopefully things will work out. Um, he goes, but if they don't, if they actually kill you and, 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 you know, cleanse you or hurt you or whatever, he's like, I'll try my best not to let it happen. But, um, but maybe it's time we, like you said, we figure out that we're not, you know, perfect beings and we need a, like a, a tone for what we've done wrong. So, um, so meanwhile, while that happens, they cut back to earth and you actually see mania running around being hunted by different, you know, beings and androids and robot people and stuff. And she's loose on earth in Philadelphia and she's very violent. <laughs> so, so issue 10 actually is the kind of the conclusion of the story. And so you have Ken Jacinto doing the artwork again, but also Ario uh, Amandito who comes in and does uh, work as well. So the two of them are working together and the book opens up with Flash and his team on the sidelines as they watch Venom inside an arena fighting other symbiotes, the other beings that are covered in symbiotes who are also agents of the cosmos. And they're just beating the crap out of the Venom suit, you know. And when Flash realizes Venom doesn't have a chance and that this is basically going to be an execution and they're not really there to cleanse them or help them, that they're fully, they, they did betray them and lie to them and that they're actually going to uh, kill the suit. Eddie's like, I mean, Eddie Flash is like, all right, team, we got to, we got to get me in that arena and I got to bond with Venom so he has a fighting chance. And if he dies, I'm going to die with him, you know. So his team's like, okay, we'll, we'll help you. So they go in and they rough up some guards and people and they get Flash into that arena. And then Flash stands in front of the suit and in between the suit and the other symbiote people, the agent, the other agents of the cosmos. And he says, uh, all right, like, I'm not going to fight you guys. Like, we're not going to, we can't win anyway. There's five of you, you're trained, you're, you're, you know, you've been doing this a long time. Like, I just don't want my friend to die alone. So like, you know, please just get this over with, you know? And, uh, and that's when the, the agents of Cosmos go, okay, like you pass the test. And he's like, what test? And he goes, let us show you. So those symbiotes go and wrap around Venom and, you know, Flash and then unlock their memories through different colors and auras and stuff. And you actually get to see the life of the symbiote, um, you know, instead of just the life of Flash. Because we've already gone through that with Flash and the symbiote in the previous issue. So this issue is showing the history of Venom and all of his hosts and stuff like that. Minus his whoever his first host was. Um, they still leave that ambiguous. Uh, but they're looking through the soul or essence of uh, the Venom suit. And that's when they discover, hey, there is a chunk of this thing missing. And he said, yeah, there was a piece of him was taken off years ago. And a clone was derived of that sliver of tissue, of symbiote tissue. And it created mania. And mania has now separated from us before we left Earth to come here. Uh, and it's on this young girl named Andy in Philadelphia, who also has the hell mark. And they go, that's what's going on. You can't be fully cleansed because a piece of you is still on Earth and it's it's dealing with the hell mark. Uh, so whatever that hell mark is, it's hurting your symbiote um, or that sliver of it. And until that is cleansed also, you're not going to be cleansed fully. So you're always going to dip back into anger and stuff. And so, uh, so you know, Flash is like, okay, so that's what we got to do now. We got to... We got our answer. We we know what's coming, and we gotta head back to Earth. Like that's what we gotta do. We gotta go find Andy, and uh, we gotta help cleanse her. And so he asked his team, "Are you guys ready to go with me?" And they're like, "We're with you till the end, buddy." Like you know, we've been through all this other crap with you. Like if if all we gotta do is go to Earth and just you know help a young girl get cured of her symbiote or whatever, he's like, uh, "Yeah, we're in for that." So. That's where the book ends, is, is all them basically heading towards Earth, or at least Flash going towards Earth. It looks like his team is going to go try to look for something that might help with the cleansing. Um, and so they're like, hey, we might go off and do something, but we'll at least bring you to Earth and, uh, and drop you off. And he's like, ah, don't worry, I got a ride. And that's obviously where he goes and meets up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and goes back to Earth for Civil War. Uh, so the next few issues are considered Civil War 2 tie-ins 
but they don't really tie into Civil War II at all. They just have the brand on it, like the, the banner, but uh, they don't really tie into it at all. They're their own story, and we're going to get to that in the next episode, which will help wrap up this you know week of, uh, of uh, Agent Venom stuff or, or Space Knight Venom stuff. So uh, let me know what you thought of this uh, these four issues. I thought they were pretty good. You know, I thought the this is a little bit stronger than the previous story, and I think that's because I like the artwork a little bit more here with Kim Jacinto. It just it feels more Venom like, you know, like the Ariel Olivetti stuff. Just it you know it worked for that Punisher you know uh, Civil War story that uh, Ariel did way back when um but uh but i i don't i'm not a big fan of it working for the the space knight stuff uh but kim jacinto's work did and so i i like that kim brought us to this point and now we're gonna have uh sandoval come in and uh, i think and do the next one or, or Rondo sandoval um who does the lee price stuff later it looks like the, he's the artist who wraps up this story uh, with Robbie Thompson, the, the writer. So we're going to get into that in the next episode. Um, but yeah, this was fun. I really, like I said, I thought these four issues were stronger than the first six. And I, I think the next three issues that wrap the story up are even stronger than this. So I can't wait to get to that. So let me know what you thought of this here. Uh, I really love that Robbie was just like, look, Space Knight or Agent of the Cosmos, whatever we're doing, let's just... It, it seemed like around this point they found out the series was going to be canceled and that they were going to relaunch Venom with a new writer and stuff. So that's I'm guessing that's probably what happened considering how far out comic books are planned. So I'm thinking, okay, uh, Robbie, I'm glad Robbie didn't just do something where you know the Space Knight stuff stayed out into space. I'm glad Robbie was like, let's bring it back and let's end this with an Andy story and kind of wrap up that thread. And I don't know if that was an editor's choice or Robbie's choice, but whoever's it was, I'm glad they did it because I think, like I said, the next three issues are the strongest of this whole bunch. And so we'll get to that very, very soon. So thank you so much. Leave your comments down below of what you thought of this series. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.